imagine being so bad that Matthew Stafford doesn't even want to play for you anymore. That's really what – I mean, that's what this game came down to, but that's what the microcosm of the season has been so far. Is It's just been a downhill trajectory after – after they got off to a pretty positive start, sounds the Arizona game, they were two and one, and you thought this is a team that can do some that can do some things. Even before on the uh, when we did the NFC North preview on our podcast, I had this team at eleven and five to start the year, and now me and everyone else who had them 10, 11 wins is feeling awful, just downright foolish, and I am fully aboard the uh, they're three five and one now. I'm fully aboard the three. 12 and 1 express get a top four draft pick and hopefully that bottoming out leads to a complete regime change because we can't go through another year of Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn there's no reason that you had Jeff Driscoll as your backup quarterback the entire year I understand no really no matter who you had if Stafford went down you were boned anyway but to only have Jeff Driscoll and then I don't know who Logan Thomas is probably emergency, and I, David Blau, David Blau, I think, is their backup behind him. That's ridiculous. The Fords need to sell the team. I mean, the Fords just need to put the right people in place. I don't think Martha is a good owner by any stretch of the imagination, but at least it sounds like um, she's not happy with this. And I mean, what owner could be happy with it, of course? But she doesn't seem to be as maybe complacent as her late husband was. But yeah, I mean the entire the entire family just kind of has a stink around the organization. But she, I mean, she just needs to let start letting people go, go in there with old lady strength, and old lady machine guns. No way, Quinn and Patricia are getting fired this year. We're going to be stuck with them one more year. I was I was fully on board with that, Mike, with that uh, with that line of thinking, especially after they traded Quandre Diggs. I thought, okay, they know they have job security which kind of sucks, but they're going to let him get another draft class. But, man, if Stafford's down for, like, three or four more weeks and the Lions lose all of those games and they only end the year with, like, five wins, if you believe um, what I think Doug Carr said on the radio that Martha is not totally sold on Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia, if the Lions do a complete nosedive, which it, sound, which it seems like and looks like they're starting to do, I can definitely see a world where Quinn and Patricia – are both fired and it's a world that I hope to live in. I don't want to, I don't want Quinn to ruin another draft class and I don't want Patricia to be just, you know, ill prepared um, another game and keep trotting out this defense that makes nobody's look great. You know, Kirk Cousins isn't a terrible quarterback, but against the Lions, he looked like he was Peyton Manning. And then today, Mitchell Trubisky might be the actual worst starter in the NFL. And he had what, two touchdowns to there. And I think one on the – or maybe three touchdowns for the air, something like that. But it was just a completely ridiculous um, – there's a ridiculous defensive display week after week after week. The Lions go out there and they don't execute a game plan. And you've had uh, former players, even Quandre Diggs came out and said, you know, like they're not putting guys in the, in the right spot to win. They don't like voices in the locker room. So if these dudes – if the coaching staff is not only – if you're going to be super strict, you at least have to be good. There has to be something to back up your, you know, no-nonsense attitude. Otherwise, you're just going to turn guys off and turn players off. And that's what it seems like has happened with uh, with the Lions. And obviously with Patricia as well. Trey Flowers was a waste of $90 million. Yeah, I like so I, I like the pickup when they made it because they're just kind of adding to their strength, which should have been the defensive line. But Trey Flowers has been a massive disappointment, and you know, with his contract, that's certainly something that you can obviously blame on Bob Quinn because he's the one who gave him the money. Michael Webb let Maddie go to a real team. I'm all behind trading Matthew Stafford, not it, not because it's any you know. Um, uh, not because it's any slight on Stafford, but only because that'll help the Lions get some draft picks. And Matt uh, Stafford is a guy that deserves way better than what we've been his entire career. Very disappointed in Trey, the entire defense as a whole. Yeah, Josh, and that's definitely the biggest indictment on Matt Patricia is he was brought in here to fix the fix the defense. You know, you're thinking is if you have a quarterback 
who's as good as Stafford is, the offense, at least on some level, is going to be at least okay. And if you have an okay offense and then you bring in a guy who's supposed to give you an elite defense, he's supposed to you know, cook up these defensive schemes that just have offenses in a tizzy, and you bring in a guy like Matt Patricia who's supposed to do that, and then you know the defense is – it seems like it gets worse every week, which every week it doesn't seem possible. And then you see, you know, worse players tear up the defense. You see bigger holes in the secondary. And you see guys just running down open free, and you still see dumb penalties like you see every week. And it just doesn't seem like there's any positive uh, positive progression on the defense. It's all just regression. Paul says, we need to draft a quarterback this draft next year. I'm assuming you're talking about the upcoming draft. I'm certainly for that. I thought they should have – well, I thought they should have got a uh, backup from this draft class, and maybe today would have gone different, although Driscoll's probably better than any of the rookies that the uh, the Lions would have picked. But, yeah, I mean, we're again, no slight on Matt Stafford at all, but at a certain point it's going to be time to move on, and if you do a complete regime change – as much as I love Stafford and as good as I think he is, I'm sure any NFL GM is going to agree Stafford's a great quarterback. But at some point, you have to see what you can get for him because you know that you're not going to go anywhere with him. Again, not an indictment on him. It's just an indictment on how terribly run the franchise has been. And you know there are other franchises who will pay a hefty price because Stafford could be that piece that ends up putting them over the top. The owner of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, just made it known today he wants to own an NFL franchise. That'd be cool. I mean, they're starting to put all those uh, those Amazon warehouses in where? Like Hazel Park? Um, I think they also opened one up in Detroit a, a couple uh, a couple months ago. So maybe Jeff Bezos is playing the long game. I wouldn't mind that, though. I mean, it's just new, really. Not that I think he'd be a good NFL owner, but if you can you know, put the right people around you, why not? If you can build Amazon, you can build the Lions. Please get a running back. That won't hurt. I mean, who went down today? It was it, it wasn't Perk. Oh, yeah, Ty Johnson went down today. And they had – I mean, they've had – they tried a couple running backs at least, and just none of them worked out. Obviously, Carrion has his injury issues. They had C.J. Anderson to start the year, and they ended up cutting him because he was no good. I think Trey Carson got hurt. Uh, Ty Johnson got hurt, and he looks – I mean, Ty Johnson at least looks good. Who else? They had um, Jerry McKissick. So there's a couple different guys. I'm not sure how much a, a better running back helps you out as opposed to just getting that offensive line right. Because I do think that with any of the running backs that they could have gotten, you don't just have like six terrible running backs for your team on the year. And no, these guys aren't like Christian McCaffrey or anything like that. But if you fix the offensive line in front of them, you can get better production from carry on. You do need somebody that can help carry on um, balance the workload, though, because if you try to run them, you know, 20, 25 times a game, carry on's not that workhorse back and he's just going to get hurt. I noticed that Tavai was calling the D today. Davis played significantly less. This is finally the end of Jared Davis. Let's hope so. And that was one of Bob Quinn's biggest gaps. But if they can move the, uh, you know, pass the torch kind of proverbially from Jared Davis to Tavai. And, I mean, Tavai has been better than I thought he'd be coming in. I still think you need a lot of help in that linebacking corps, though. And I do hope that we see a linebacking future that uh, that does not include Jared Davis. There's, there's so many plays he just misreads. He's a great athlete, and he's super fast, but he's, <laughs> he's he doesn't do anything else. He's just flying around to the field, always missing his spots. Which I mean, some, obviously sometimes because he's so fast he can get there, but he he is out of position way too often. Sucks. You can get Terrell Sucks. Good T sizzle here. Ball so hard university. If we don't have Stafford, who's going to want to take the head coaching job is the only problem. I mean, there's only 32, uh, 32 head coaching jobs in the NFL. And shout out Nick Harris anyway, my boy. But uh. I mean, there's only 32 of those jobs in the NFL, so I don't know who you can get that – and there there are other jobs that are going to be open that are better than Detroit's. Like, you probably even see Matt Nagy fired, so the Chicago job will be open. And there are a couple of jobs you'd rather have than the Lions, but there's not a lot of uh, – there's not a lot of head coaching candidates out there that are just downright 
uh, turning down NFL jobs. We have a really good offense this year under Bevel. Defense seems to be getting worse under Patricia. If I'm the Lions, I'd fire Pasqualoni. I'd fire Pasqualoni too, but because I would fire everybody else. And it's probably, you know, unfair to fire Bevel, given that the offense has looked better under him. But Bevel doesn't come without his criticisms either. In the games where the Lions had the second half leads, they put up the graphic today. It was like five of, I think, in the, all in their first five games, they were leading with, you know, two minutes left to go in the game or something. Um, Bevel's had. Bevel's had shortcomings this year where the offense wasn't as aggressive in the second half, but I want Patricia gone and I want Bob Quinn gone. So if you're going to fire Patricia and Bob Quinn, you know, you can't have the new staff. Hey, you have to keep this offensive coordinator. At least, at least you shouldn't. I get, you know, theoretically you could do whatever you want, but I think Bevel would just uh, more or less kind of be a casualty here, which would be unfortunate for him, but, uh, you know, he'll, he'll find another job. Pascaloni, he'll not, he won't find a job as a coordinator anyway. Maybe a specific uh, defensive line coach or something. But I don't, I wouldn't see Pascaloni ever getting a job as a full-time defensive coordinator again. Dustin said these losses are fully on Patricia. He uses the game clock so poorly and never throws a challenge. The whole team needs a full rebuild. They need to dump and acquire picks. I agree with about half of that. I don't think the losses are fully on Patricia. Although I don't think that Patricia's a uh, a good coach either, but it is really hard to blame a hundred percent of loss on any coach ever, because obviously at the end of the day, the players are the ones out there playing and the, the penalties that the players commit, those can be a result of poor coaching, but it's still, it's still the players doing that. It's still the players jumping off sides. Um, you know, in some of the losses like the green Bay lo- good loss, obviously not the harp on it, but you have other, uh, other things that, um, that can factor in, you know, like the officiating, um, you know, and just kind of guys making making great plays. But Patricia's bad. I do think they need a full rebuild, though. So I'd be totally fine. That's why I said, you know, I know a lot of people have joined on since we first started. But to reiterate, I'm uh, I'm driving the three twelve and one bus. So anybody that wants to hop on board, get on now. Is hope they lose the rest of their games, get a top four pick. And buy, you know, bottom out, fire everybody, let a new GM and a new coach come in here and, you know, at least start their, start their full rebuild with an, uh, with an elite player. Dustin, it starts at the top. Absolutely. It starts at the top and trickle, trickles all the way down. And, you know, you heard it from former players that were here, even under this regime, who really hasn't been there that long. Uh, you know, Matt Patricia is two years. I think Bob Quinn is at four years. And there are ex-players coming out that have said basically they don't like the way that uh, that everything's run. And that's obviously an indictment on, on what starts at the top, the management, the coaching, um, you know, obviously trickle, trickling down and giving you what you see on the field. How do you feel about Bevel's offense? I really like it. They're letting them sling it, but still no run game. Any chance Bevel will be, would be considered for head coach. I like Bevel's offense. The one – the one criticism that, you know, I've heard a lot and it's a very fair criticism, it's one that um, on, on our Sports Carnage podcast, uh, Paul Roshan, who, who's obviously one of, the, one of the other guys on the podcast with me, you know, it's, it's something that he harps on and is absolutely right about it, is, you know, you, Bevel tries to run the ball too much and we don't have, we just don't have the personnel for it. You know, he's able to run the ball well in Seattle because he, you know, always had a stable of good running backs and he had an offensive line that was at least capable of run blocking. And back when he was there, Russell Wilson ran a little bit more than he runs now. And when he was in Minnesota, obviously he had Adrian Peterson back there and a better offensive, a better offensive line than what the Lions are working with. So we don't have a back, of course, as good as Marshawn or Adrian Peterson, and we don't have a quarterback as mobile as Russell Wilson, because in Seattle, those offensive lines weren't in they, they weren't even really average, you know, by NFL standards, at least not for not for kind of the last few years that uh, Russell Wilson has been there. But they were still better than what the Lions are working with. And they obviously had a quarterback that can make things happen on uh, plays that weren't designed runs. And now you know, you just keep, they keep trying to run the ball probably a little bit too much. And I understand not wanting to be one dimensional, but at the same time, the, the league is set up 
to where, you know, you can have great success in the passing game by throwing the ball 40, 45 times uh, because of the rules, because defenses obviously aren't allowed to play as tight as they used to be. And if you throw it that many times, you even saw it today where you're going to get uh, defensive holding penalties, um, some defensive pass interferences, things like that. And obviously you have a top-level quarterback that's able to get the ball out with the, with the receivers and weapons that you have. You know, even if TJ Hawkinson has been a little bit of a disappointment, he's still a guy who for, you know, one play a game is able to get you like a 25, 30-yard catch. And then you can work some of those running backs out of the backfield. Ty Johnson, carry on. Um, you know, is J.D. McKissick is uh, – yeah, Jared McKinnon and J.D. McKissick. But those are guys that you can, you know, throw the ball to. And just with, like, by their athleticism and speed, you can make something happen. Bob says bring in Happy Gilmore. And we couldn't be worse. To any, and then for the second part, any chance Bevel would be considered head coach? Uh, that's kind of something I just started to think about during the game when you're talking or, you know, just kind of when you're thinking of, like, hey, this these guys need to be fired. You know, it's really time for a regime change. I thought why, you know, Bevel's had a track record of um, of success where he's gone. I don't know how good of a head coach he would he would necessarily make. And the thing with Bevel that would scare me as a head coach is it just kind of what we talked about, is if he's still trying to run the ball when there's no sense in running the ball. And you even saw last week when they had the, the fourth and one play on the goal line and you know, all the all their best players essentially were off the field. So that's what would scare me off of um off Darren Bevel being the head coach. And I would I wouldn't like to see it. What happened to Slay? Um I'm not I'm not sure does Slay get hurt. I mean Slay overall has had a pretty decent year, a, a better year than he's had last year, but I didn't notice I didn't at least I didn't notice any type of um like injury or anything, it's, uh, injury sustained today, um, or you just mean like he was a he was a no show or he didn't play or something. Eddie Gade said, "I hate for the Lions to move if they get a new owner. New owners tend to do that from time to time." Yeah, that's something. Uh, that's something that we we brought up on our podcast as well. If the Lions did move, would you follow them or would you support the new team that's in Detroit? Because if there was, if if the Lions moved, I have no doubt that Detroit would get a new football team because we have, you know, all three of the other major sports. And it's it's still a good football city. The Lions are far and away the most popular team in the city, and they're the team that everybody um, loves and obviously hates the most. But I'd like for Detroit to – if if somebody moved and it was a new owner, they could come in and get it. But I don't see really why a new owner would move. I, I assume the Lions make a lot of money. You know they probably shouldn't because they're they they've been terrible forever. Fire Pascaloni. He's only had his job because he gave Patricia his first job. Yeah, Pascaloni's terrible, and I don't even think he's calling the defense. But him him and Patricia obviously share some type of same defensive philosophy, and it's not something that has worked for the Lions. We need to get away from the Ford family. They make too many bad decisions. Yeah, I mean I really only care about how they how they run a football team. Um, the Lions should go after Jim Harbaugh. They they probably have before um, when they hired Patricia. I'm I'm going to assume they at least made a call to Harbaugh. Uh, but I mean, yeah, Harbaugh is a way better coach than Patricia is, and he's you know had more success at the NFL level than um, than he's seen at Michigan. But I mean, Jim Harbaugh or his brother John. But John John was on the rocks a couple years ago. And now with uh, Lamar Jackson, you know, putting up 60 points on people. So John Harbaugh won't be available for a long time. Is the the Harbaugh I prefer. But Jim would be good here too. Why not running backs get paid to run the ball? They haven't had a good running back since Stafford has been there. They had they had a couple, in my opinion, they've had a couple good running backs. Both have just, you know, had injury problems. I like Job at Best a lot. And he had all the concussions and stopped playing football. And then he went on to do Olympic – bobsledding or something um it might have been track but I, I feel like it was something funnier like bobsledding or luge and then you know carry on is a guy that i think has tremendous ability he just can't stay just can't stay healthy jim wells my man you're on these every week i appreciate it all this money on defense and the results go get a new coach from college 
why not let blow go in second half? He got a better arm. The uh, I, well, Driscoll played about as well as, as Jeff Driscoll can. He is hard to put the blame on him. Obviously, the last play was kind of reverse, and it was incomplete, so it didn't matter. But almost a reverse Dan Orlovsky, where they don't have the awareness to know where they're at on the field. He goes above the line of scrimmage, and then he throws. The decision that I absolutely hated was at the end of the first half, they had 12 seconds. They ran the ball. They called the timeout with 12 seconds left. And then um, Driscoll ran. I think Driscoll ran to get out of bounds with three seconds, uh, maybe six seconds, something like that. But basically, instead of trying to hail Mary from 55, 60 yards out, they uh, they just ran the ball, which why? I mean, you have if, – if it's even the slightest chance of getting a complete, it can get you points. You get a pass interference. Anything like that is going to help your team down the stretch. And then they ran a draw play, which was obviously not going to get you the result, the the only result that mattered. Do why not get a coach from college? Yeah, uh, one thing that I thought watching the um, – yeah, I'm sure some of you guys probably had the same thought too, because he's a guy who's coached, of course, in the state before. Um, and yesterday he had a they had a primetime game at noon that they ended up winning. Um, but PJ Fleck from Minnesota, why not let him try his hand in the in the NFL? And he's a guy that can clearly motivate his team. You know, obviously coaching an NFL team and recruiting is different. But I mean, give uh, give Fleck a shot at the NFL level. See what see what he's able to do. And, I mean, at the very least, again, it's recruiting, so you're able to handpick players, sort of. Not that Minnesota gets the cream of the crop, but he's put together a good offensive line at Minnesota, so maybe he's got an eye for talent there, or he knows, you know, kind of who to look for and what to look for, because to me that's still the biggest thing that we're missing. Would you try to go after coaches from college? I'm going to go after anybody that's that's better. I, I do like the idea of a college coach to come in and just give you new ideas. And I don't you how many ideas are actually like new in football, but I do think that college tends to evolve more than the NFL does. So I like the idea of getting a new or a coach from college as opposed to somebody who's kind of been in the NFL circles if you're going with a total and complete rebuild. And then also as a joke, but kind of serious because I you know kind of what's the worst that can happen? You get PJ Fleck as coach and Pat McAfee as your GM, I'd be all for that. It's a guy who knows football, and he can connect with people. And he seems like he's smart enough to put the right guys in place. He's, it's probably not something that at least Matt is interested in, though, because he's doing all of his all of his media stuff, and his he, he just seems like someone who likes to talk a lot, which, you know, in all the jobs that he does, he's he does it very well, and he gets to do that. But that, that'd that be my dream scenario. But I, I would like P.J. Fleck as coach. Just put, put that on the record. Season's not over. I'm looking at the remaining schedule. I can see the Lions winning six for all seven remaining. Gordon, you are, man, you're the happiest person in the world. I want to come to your house for Christmas. If you can see the Lions winning all, are they three, five, and one? So they have eight, seven games remaining? Yeah. If you can see the Lions running the table and winning all seven of their games, then God bless you. Brendan LeVere, looking forward. We have to draft the QB second round and fire the defensive coordinator. Anything after that is a plus. Figure it out. I think we have to fire everyone, uh, not just the defensive coordinator. And it doesn't even start with the defensive coordinator, but they, they do have to fire everyone. Jim Wells, Stafford out four weeks with the broken back. Yeah, so um, I've heard it was like three weeks, but that, at that time it was more speculation than anything that I've seen concrete. Um, I – I mean, at, at this point, because of what I want to do, I want, like I said, the Lions 3-12-1 express. I want them to lose the rest of their games, get everybody new, get a top draft pick. So I'd be in favor of shutting Stafford down for the rest of the year because that's going to help. That would help me accomplish what I want the Lions to accomplish, which is just losing all the rest of your games. And obviously, at this point, the Lions probably would have to win out in order to sniff the playoffs, or they'd have to win six of their last seven. It's a very, very unrealistic scenario with Stafford probably already being out, you know, three or four weeks moving forward anyway. It's, to me, it doesn't make sense to play Matt Stafford. 
any any more this year. You let him get fully healed and come back next year and you know just work with n- new people <laughs> and maybe get a maybe even get a better um better view of the offense from the uh like from the sideline cuz you know sometimes that helps players when they're able to view it kind of how a coach does view it. Why do they continue to play prevent defense? We had success blitzing in the first half. They don't have the personnel to run New England's defense. Well, I mean, that's exactly why is because that's really what Patricia's based his uh, – it's what he based his time in New England on. And even at his end in New England, yeah, they went to the Super Bowl, but that entire season their defense was bad. And since he's left, their defense has gone way up in terms of, um, you know, in terms of like efficiency, turnovers, talent, and now they're just not – and now they're not giving up points. But that's that's always been kind of Patricia's philosophy is if you bend and don't break. And part of it, at least to me, was you could play that in New England and you can play the whole other team to a field goal defense because you had Tom Brady and Rob Kankowski and Bill Belichick on the other side um, helping you out and scoring those points. So you can trade three for seven with the Lions. Obviously, you're not getting seven every time down. So instead of getting those stops and flipping field position, if you're giving the other team three, three, and then seven, and you yourself only scored six in that time frame, then you know you're down a touchdown and, like, you're giving the ball back. So you can't play that same style here because we we just have worse players than the Patriots do. Do you think they should put Stafford on IR at this point? So, uh, yeah, Mike, <laughs> I do. Oh, four weeks, Green Bay losing zero to seven. Well, there's good news. We made Mitch look like the MVP. And we made Mitch look great. We made Stafford look great. And, uh, you know, d- d- somehow we were able to shut down Mahomes as you know well as we did. And then we let these scrubs come in and absolutely destroy us. I mean, we let um, is it da- David Carr, Derek Carr. Derek Carr looked, uh, looked good against us too. Martha needs to sell the team. There's, yeah, there's a lot of that going around. Top five offense, did less defense, defense wins championships, and your game plan is to rush three guys. That's so stupid, too. How do you ever expect to get pressure rushing two, three? Um, <laughs> like the, and if you don't get pressure, you're not going to win in the NFL. The quarterback's going to have too much time, and we talked about it a little bit earlier. It's just the way the game's designed. You give the quarterback more time, you're not allowed to play as, as aggressive a defense. So the receivers are bound to get free. Harbaugh would not be a good fit with the Lions. I think Harbaugh would be a good fit anywhere in the NFL, truthfully. But if I don't, I don't see Harbaugh wanting to leave Michigan, though, except every year you get reports of, hey, you know, Harbaugh's eyeing to come back to the NFL. And Harbaugh sends out a letter saying our enemies are trying to tear us down or something. If you can run the ball, you can keep your defense off the field. You can, and the Lions cannot do either because they can't run the ball. Belichick is laughing at all teams to pick up players and coaches that he's dealt with. Yeah, the Belichick tree is is very rotten. So it's got it's got a great core, right? And like the healthiest, the healthiest actual wood on it, and then all the branches from it are just it almost seems like they're cursed. And they're all dead before dead before they hit the ground. Nothing's gonna change until we get owners who care. See, I th- I think Martha cares. I just don't know how good she is at identifying people who can identify football talent or people who can put that in place. I think she has, you know, advisors who say, Hey, Matt Patricia is a guy who comes from new England. He's a really good fit. Uh, Bob Quinn was part of their scouting and drafting department. You know, he's a really good fit. And I think she, you know, takes obviously that advice from, from them. I think she wants to win. She just doesn't know how flex signed seven year with the Gophers. Yeah, he he did. I mean, there's always, of course, a buyout, and Mar- Martha's got the money to buy him out. So I, I hope she'd pay up for that. But like I said, that's my dream. It's probably a pipe dream. I don't see Fleck getting poached for the NFL at least this year. But I mean, I'd, I'd love to welcome back, welcome him back to Michigan. There's a young guy, and if he works out, then he's your coach for, you know, 15 years. Um, and if he doesn't work out, you know, obviously you kind of push the reset button again. But I like the idea, like I said, of getting someone with some um, with some newer ideas and guy who's seen. Um, I I even like people who've seen the college game at that level because then they know that you know they're more in the know than even like NFL uh, scouts just because they're around the game so much. 
bring back Caldwell. I mean, she, Cal, Caldwell's better than uh, better than Patricia. I said I didn't I didn't like Caldwell either. The coach has to go. Yes, this will give Patricia another year. Watch if Stafford is out the rest of the year. Yeah, that's been a conspiracy that's kind of been floated around um, within just the like the media here and the fan talking cycle is if the Lions end up sitting uh, Stafford the rest of the year, that that'll buy another year for Patricia and Quinn because, you know, you can sell it as, well, hey, our quarterback went down, so we weren't able to do anything. I, I don't think that's the case, though, if they do bottom out. You know, if they win five or six games, I, th- I think everybody's going to be gone. And I, I, hope that's, I, I hope that's the case. But it's also what, like I said, uh, what Doug Karsh has at least gone on record and said he expects to happen, too, based on conversations he's had. And he's obviously way more plugged in than I am. We should trade Stafford in Dallas for one of their linebackers and give him a chance to win a championship. That's been floated a lot, too. I think Dylan and Dylan's mentioned that a couple times on our podcast. I would have loved to trade Stafford a couple years ago when Romo was hurt. And you could kind of tell it was the end of Romo's career. But now, I mean, they have they have Dak Prescott, and it seems like Jerry Jones really loves Dak Prescott. If I'm Dallas, I'm taking Stafford ahead of Dak. But if they go out and they give Dak, you know, $38, $40 million a year, there's, of course, no way that they're trading for Stafford and the remainder that he has on his contract. But the next couple of years, and here's kind of where Dallas might be thinking and, you know, we, we, of course, hope they are if they're going to take Stafford off our hands. is I was looking at the numbers the other day, and Stafford's under contract until he's, he's 31 right now, and he's under contract until he's like 34. Um, so if the Cowboys want kind of this three-year window where they're, they'd actually get Stafford at a deal cheaper than whatever they would pay Dak. So you're going to save cap there, and you're going to get an instant upgrade at quarterback. The only uh, difference to them is obviously then after – the Nefford Stafford's contract is up, you're probably drafting a quarterback. Um, and who who knows if they want to do that? I hope they do, though. And if I were them, I would. Go go get that window. Have Stafford, Zeke, Amari Cooper, um, you know, just kind of mortgage, mortgage your future for the Super Bowl that um, that Jerry Jones needs because he's, he's an old man. And hopefully – and obviously we don't wish um, – we don't wish anything to happen to him soon, but his, his better years are definitely behind him. Trading Stafford is not the answer. He'll deny the trade because he wants to win Detroit. Does Stafford have a no trade clause? Stafford, I mean, I don't think Stafford wants to leave here. But if you trade him, I don't know. I don't know how much veto power he has. Looks like they don't even practice. <laughs> he didn't win in Detroit. Give him the same respect as Verlander. Dude, there she's <laughs> There you go, John. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter. He has voiced his opinion. Doesn't want to go anywhere. Stafford is a Lions lifer. Yeah, I mean, Stafford, like you said, he doesn't want to go anywhere. But, again, I don't know how much power he has in doing it. She doesn't know about football. She doesn't know much about football. That would have been a big difference. If you can't block, can't accomplish anything with football. Yeah, but he had a chance to go home. Texans play for the Cowboys. What do you think he's going to stay? I mean, again, I just don't know that Stafford has that much power to do it. Um, Stafford got three years left on his contract. Yeah, so he's 31 now, and he's with us three, he's 34. When he's 35, that's when the contract ends. And you, you'd you hope that um, that's something that the Cowboys would bite on. But I I think at least that Jerry Jones likes Dak too much to not pay him. If that happens, then obviously you kind of have to find somewhere else to, uh, somewhere else to send Stafford. With that being said, though, Dallas isn't the only team that is – Quarterback needy, you know, send Stafford to uh, to Denver. They have Flacco now, and then they have Drew Locke, who it sounds like they hate. Players can deny anything. All parties have to agree on the trade for it to work. Uh, that's not true. I mean, like if he refuses to get on the plane, I don't see Stafford ever doing that though. But and he'd be under contract, so unless he like held out. And then at that point, he wouldn't get paid. Don over Arnold. <laughs> That's really funny. I'll tell Don you said that, though. It's Don. Don, Don will be happy to hear that he's – um him and Arnold have a rivalry going on. So Don will be happy to hear that he's he's your favorite over over Mr. Arnold. Um, players can deny. 
But yeah, I don't think players can deny it. I don't know if they have no trade clauses in the NFL. But that's uh that's kind of what we had for that's what we had for you guys today. Um if you if you liked what you heard and you hate the Lions, then hop aboard again, the three twelve and one express with me. We'll be riding through Detroit. You can find us at the uh at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh front line in it. Be your grand marshal, Donald Drysdale, with Arnold Powell in the uh in this in the sidecar with them. But that's what we have for you guys. Uh, remember to check out our Sports Carnage podcast, hosted by Detroit Sports Nation, of course. And we just dropped our we just dropped it on Friday, and we spoke about um, what happened in last week's games. They come out usually every Thursday. Do you think David Blow starts next week? No, they're gonna let uh, they're gonna let Driscoll start. But that's probably something we won't be discussing on the podcast is who the Lions started back at quarterback. But we discuss a whole lot of nonsense, a whole lot of Detroit sports that are. Um, that, that at least we think are fresh or else we wouldn't do it. But check that out. We just drop one on Friday, and then we drop one every week. You can um, follow our little page in the description there, and then you can find us where, wherever else you consume your social media, um, Twitter, YouTube, obviously our Facebook page. But, yeah, check it out. Apple Podcasts and iTunes, Sports Carnage. We'll be here reacting to – other things on Facebook Live. I haven't done a Pistons game in a minute. I fell asleep on the last one. And then the one before that, I was uh, we were actually recording the podcast. So I wasn't able to uh, to get to it in a timely manner. But tomorrow they have uh, – tomorrow Blake Griffin comes back, which is super exciting. And they're four or they're four and six without him. Um, so able to, able to kind of keep the boat afloat a little bit. But hopefully now that Blake's back, we can get, uh, we can get our legs under us and start start our playoff push uh and also tickets are only like 10 bucks um from what i saw earlier so if you need something to do tomorrow night head on down to little caesar's arena and see the pistons play the timberwolves there's my plug hopefully they give me free tickets for that but that's what we have for you guys tonight thank you for joining me go lions go 3121 express go everybody in allen park losing their jobs except for matthew stafford <laughs>